Oh, hi. OK, good morning. Uh, my name is Joan Lubomirsky, and I was appointed by the city administrator to be a hearing officer in these cases. And what our procedure is that, uh, first of all, the public works uh, representative and the appellant would come forth and be sworn in by the clerk. And then the public works would give a presentation uh, of the case. The appellant could present their case. There might be some informal conversation about solutions. And then uh, the final notice will be sent by mail. So uh, <clears throat> I'd like to officially call this to, uh, to order. Uh, our first item is uh, citation number 213705222200 Eddy Street. And if I could ask uh, Mr. Simon or whichever public works person is going to be rep doing this to come forward and be sworn. And also uh, the appellant, is, it, is the appellant here? The representative for 280? Oh, okay, could you come forward please too? Thank you, yeah, you can just both be sworn in at the same time, that's all. Hi. Okay, the, the, yes, the clerk will swear you in and then Public Works will give their presentation and then you could give oh. yours. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Please raise your right hands and state your name for the record. Nancy Wong, representing Daryl Dilworth for, for Public Works. Satyavinder Multani, I'm the owner of the business at 200 Eddy Street. Great. Do you solemnly swear that the testimonies you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yes. Please okay. have a seat. Right. Ms. Wong will start. Thank you. On Saturday, November 17, 2018, while performing a routine inspection in District 6, I found a huge pile of cardboard boxes dumped on the sidewalk up against a city litter receptacle on the northwest corner of Turk and Jones, which is a box approximately one block from where the store is located. Upon further inspection, I found labels with the business name and address attached to it, which is evidence possibly identifying this establishment as the violator. Be advised that this business has been most recently worn on November 22, 2016 for the same offense. As the pile of cardboard boxes were dumped on the public right of way, directly against a city litter receptacle, a short distance away from the business. I issue a citation to the business owner and property owner for violating 280 MHC in the amount of 150 and MPC 35A. This is November 18th. Here's the, Here's the photo by the city can. And these are the made on labels. And the pile of cardboard boxes next to it. As you can see, the labels of the marking identifying the offender and the photos more clearly on the, uh, how the cardboard boxes was put against the city can. These are the photos from May 21st, 2016, how the corporate boxes was placed in front, but with no recycle bin. I'm sorry, did you say 2016? 2016. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the appellant. And I'm, how do I pronounce, my last name is Lubomirsky. So how do I pronounce your last name, sir? Yes, my last name is uh, Multani. Multani, Mr. Yes. Multani, yeah. thank you. So what happened is I understand uh, they found one of the box, not all of boxes are mine, and which is a huge problem in the tenderloin. And we do have, uh, ever since I took over the business for 12 years, we have two times a service uh, from uh, Recology, Golden Gate Recology, like a Thursday and Sunday. So sometimes we have to keep them outside for them, and they are very much behind on their schedule. Sometimes they pick up like early morning, and then sometimes they don't pick up like late afternoon. That's ongoing issue even with the property uh, managers for TNDC we, we owned, I mean, we, we renting from. And then also 2016, I see that boxes. That's actually, I remember I was there and one of the officers who took the pictures, uh, there was a rainy day and I was pulling my van out to pick those up, but he didn't give me a chance. And I do send the email to the DPW about his behavior to my business. And then they took action to it and then they have replaced somebody else to come in because he was aggressively harassing my business uh, regarding this. Um, and then one time I have to pull the mail or the box and show it to the police officer. Um, the PG is a very familiar police officer in the neighborhood. And then he took action. He wrote a letter to the business, whoever dumping the boxes overnight because there's a lot of construction. So what they do is when they take the Taylor Street up, they drop the boxes over there because we close midnight. And most of the business close at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. And we have no reason to take one box and go all the way down to the Golden Gate Street, which is two blocks, not one block. It's more than two and a half blocks from my business. And there is three businesses on that corner. There is a Maryland liquor. There is a GNH liquor. There is a coffee shop right across the street. So it, it could have been their boxes. They only found one box, and they sent me the citation. And I do have service from the Golden Gate Ecology, and we've been working with the Healthy Corner Store Collusion, which is the city of San Francisco. We are part of the um, pilot program, which is uh, helping the community. I do have the letter from them. And then also, we do recycling. I'm a dealer uh, for recycling in the neighborhood. I'm the only one doing recycling. And I do have the letter for recycling. We redeem cans from the customer. And then um, also, um, I have my, all my bills from Ecology, mm -hmm. all the bills from recent ones and all ones. We have service. And this is the letter from TNDC stating that they also have service. They're working with us. I always keep my property clean. That's the recommendation letter from the TNDC, the landlord uh, from the city of San Francisco also. And then... Um, And this is my certification from Healthy Corner Store Collusion, which is we work with the, for the healthier options for the community. We've been working with the community for the last five years or six years, and we're part of the community. I have no reason to take my cardboard and throw it at the Golden Gate Street, which is, I, that's not my route. I live, in, I live in Delhi City. I have no reason to go there and dump my boxes, even I have services, and I always monitor my boxes. I put them in my van if it's extra, and I take it to the, the garbage station. So I don't think this violation is legit. They just took one box and then give me the citation. That's not fair. There's a lot of homeless in the city. Okay, if I understand what you're saying, yes. is that the place that was next to the city can, the, 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 the cardboard yes, that was next to the city can in the photographs, you're saying is two and a half blocks from your right. place of business? Yes. And that is only one box to pull. What about the rest of the boxes? Mm -hmm. Why they don't give the citation for those other people? <laughs> With your cardboard, do, do you recycle it? We do. And t and, uh, yes. And we have a recology uh, twice a week. Mm -hmm. We have a Golden Gate recology, and I have a recent bill. They charge me, Sorry. They charge me $277 every month. Every month, this is my bill. Two Sorry about that. So they just found one box, 
and they gave me a citation. Mm -hmm. What about the rest of the boxes on the picture? Mm -hmm. And I have the picture here. They don't belong to me. Mm -hmm. And I ha like I said, I have no reason to go to somebody else's business and dump my garbage. So I don't think this is a legit violation. They just, somebody maybe took the box while we were uh, waiting for the Golden Gate Ecology, homeless person, and threw it over there. Okay. Thank you. I have a question for Ms. Wong, if you don't mind. Thank you. And maybe we can talk informally. Um, the location, maybe I missed this when you explained it Oh, earlier. I didn't write this, so I'm just oh. representing the oh. person. Okay. So I'm but just giving out his testimonial and what his finding was no, that No, day. I understand. Yeah, I'm representing. Yeah, yeah, I got it. But the, um, the location of where the... The boxes? Box was found. Is that two and a half blocks from... No, he stated on the statement that it was approximately one block from where the store is located. On coming from his um, his report. Okay, and did um, the inspector note any other addresses on cars? Well, usually when we go out and inspect, we usually have to take one or two photos of right. the evidence. So I assume that day he only took one for instead of digging through the rest of it that day. Because, um, like I said, there's a history here. And uh, I'm sorry, the history? You said there was a warning on Yeah, the there was a notice of violation on um, May 6th that he took the photo. Right. And the citation was written for May 21st. Have there been other violations um, at uh, at 280 this Street? Um, is there a history of compliance pull, as far as you know? I can pull it up in my tablet to look if you want me If to. you wouldn't mind, that would yeah, be helpful. Yeah. And we thank you. We that problem. Okay, they, they have the data. I, thank you, though. Sorry, give me a second. I'm working on one of my other stuff. And I know. We, yeah. we, we depend on technology, and then it doesn't work. I understand. <laughs> if you don't have it, that's okay. But if, if it's there, Yeah, give it some used. time. It's just... Modern technology is slow. I'm sorry? Modern technology is yes. very slow. Yes, yes. I mean, I can show it to you if you just want to continue to go on until it pulls up, if you like, or? No, but if you have it there. If, if you don't, it's okay. Yeah, I'm still waiting for it to load the data. Okay. Let's give it just a couple, a little bit of time. No, I couldn't pull it out. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I've, do you have anything else to add, Mr. Multani? Uh, if you could speak into the microphone, please. Sure. So what I need to do is I, I appreciate DPW also. They've been working. I've been have this business for 12 years. I see the improvement. Um, and every time I drive by, I see a lot of boxes all over two years ago. I don't know, they have a new supervisor or new management. I don't know what happened, but I see a lot of cleanup on the street, which is I appreciate DPW. They work very the, hard. Yes, they, they do. But recently, like this kind of stuff, and we are very responsible, and I monitor my business twice a day. I come in the morning, before I open my door, I always make sure my, my sidewalk is clean, which is already stated by the, the landlord from TNDC. And they also monitor in the afternoon, and even in the evening, I don't let nobody stay out of my business. That violation, I understand, 216, they gave me a warning, and I, there was a warning, it wasn't a violation. Warning is right. fix the problem, which is I did. And this, this uh, cardboard wasn't in my property. That was away from my property, and I don't know how that happened. 
So I don't think this is a legit violation, and I, I don't think I'm responsible for that one. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, our next step will be that I will issue my findings by mail. And uh, we do have your mailing address is 200 Eddy, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay, thank you very much for being here. Okay, uh, our next item is citation number 2137-0050-65 Liberty Street. I have Lana Harshman as the name here. Are there? Thank you. Okay, Ms. Harshman, if you could just come and be sworn in, and then, again, you were here earlier. Public Works will give their presentation. Why don't you use this one? one hey, will it be the same? Deep, will it be you, Ms. Wong, again? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Good morning. Morning. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give is the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank Have you. a seat. Okay, Ms. Wong. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. I'm sorry. On Tuesday, November 13, 2018, at approximately 4.09 p.m., while performing a routine inspection, I found a pile of cardboard boxes on the sidewalk in front of 1070 Valencia Street. Upon further inspection, I found a box with mailing label of 65 Liberty affixed to it. Utilizing my department-issued tablet, I was able to identify the owner of 65 Liberty to be Hilda Nam 2012 Irrevocable Gifts Trust. I then issue a citation on Hilda Nam 2012 Irrevocable Gift Trust for the violation of MHC 280, commonly known as Illegal Dumping Code. Here's one of the labels that we found in the cardboard box in front of 1070. It's right by the uh, bicycle rack. Here's another uh, label that we found on the cardboard box. With um, Lana Harshman at 65 apartment 206. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Um, Harshman. And if I can understand, the, the, the building is held in a trust in another name, is that right? Yeah, so that was the first thing I wanted to explain is why I am oh. here and okay. not the person okay. that the citation is for. Okay. Um, so I'm a former resident of 65 Liberty Street, uh, which is the apartment that was cited for this. Mm -hmm. um, I am here because they, um, the apartment stated that they would not, um, they would not try to refute this, uh, that they would pay in full and then deduct the $250 charge out of my security deposit. Um, so just quite simply, I didn't drop these boxes there. Um, I was surprised to see that there were multiple photos. Um, the citation that I received only had one photo. Um, and for the one photo I have, um, it was this, just the first photo that was shown. Um, I don't know how this works. There we go. Um, this one here, I was able to look up that box and I remember it specifically. It was a shirt that I ordered online. I received it on uh, November 7th and I was debating whether or not to return it. So I held onto the box for a while, but as I do with all of my boxes, I break them down and I put them into the blue bin in the apartment building. Um, there's no reason for me to walk around 
down the street to throw some boxes away when I can walk downstairs and put it in a bin there. Um, a more likely explanation um, is that someone took the boxes out of the bin. Um, I have here a letter from my property manager. Um, you can see at the bottom here, Lauren Crawford. Uh, the building was undergoing seismic retrofitting uh, during this time. Uh, this states that it started in September of 2018. They didn't finish it until December of 2018, uh, which is in the window of when these boxes were found. Um, during this time, the trash had been relocated. So originally, normally it's in the garage. The garage is a secured garage. You can only get in if you live in the building. Uh, during the site of retrofitting, they moved the trash still within the garage, uh, but I witnessed on multiple occasions the garage door being open during, these, during this construction. So very easily, someone could have come in and taken the boxes and moved them somewhere else. Uh, and so that's what I think is the likely explanation. Um, I upheld my, my obligations to break down boxes and recycle them um, in a blue bin, and there'd be no reason for me to go down the street to do that. So what was the letter that you showed there? Was that about the size of retrofit? Yeah, so this Can is I just- Can I take a look at that, please? Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And, and how far is uh, 65 Liberty Street from 1070 Valencia, Valencia? I assume a couple blocks. Again, the citation that I received didn't even have the address it was found. <laughs> it uh, just had 65 Liberty Street as the indicator. I believe this is a record store in Valencia, if my memory serves me right. I can um, check with Public Works because it's yeah, in their records. It's okay. a few blocks away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I do have a question for Public Works. Okay. So, thank you. I mean, these cases are difficult. I have to. I'm sorry. When was the, um, the, the seismic uh, being done? Oh, it was being done at 65 Liberty Street. There was seismic work being done. And what month? Uh, You could look at the, pa yeah, at the letter. Because she, uh, yeah, she, yeah. The the P, the public information officer was out on November thirteenth. That's why. So I, I just need to time. So that was during that period of time. Yeah. Okay. That's what they. That's why I needed to know because no, I'm thank just you reading for clarifying that. No, it's good. It's All good. right. Thank you. And then if I understand, so and the materials were found at 1070 Valencia. Yes. Um, as you can see from that, from the photo mm -hmm. that the pup, uh, the inspector found was in there, and he just only took one photo mm -hmm. of the label instead of rummaging through all that. So, so to your in the report, the report doesn't mention any other labels or any other mailing labels that might have been in that pile. No, I guess he didn't further dig into it. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe we just, we usually take either one or two photos just for evidence. Yeah. That it's uh, how the whole picture of the box. Right. And what we found inside. Okay. As part of it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Ms. Uh, Harshman? Um, or questions? Can I, can I ask just uh, one question, actually, um, about the shipping labels? Did you say there were only there was only one shipping label found? No, he just wrote it as only one. Only one. Yeah, okay. He didn't dig through the rest of the box. That it, okay. Ms. Wong is saying that that's what's in the report, to her knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. 
Yes, of course. Um, so then on that note, uh, I think it's unreasonable to ask a $250 fine for one box that was found. Um, I mean, ultimately, I don't think I'm liable at all. But if I am found liable, I think at least a reduction uh, is in order because there's nothing linking me to the other boxes. Um, and yep, that's, I mean, ultimately, I wouldn't walk around the block uh, to recycle something when I can just go down. I'm also troubled by your landlord saying that it would be taken from your deposit because it's the landlord's responsibility yes, to take uh, care of the recycling. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Unless there's something in your lease, but yeah. or your, your rental agreement. Nope, it's just to bring okay. it downstairs. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, I'll be issuing my findings by mail. And uh, in the future, if something like this comes up again, Public Works is very willing to talk to people on the phone and try to work things out. And, and the, I mean, they have a hard job too. And they, uh, but they're willing to certainly talk and figure out solutions. Great, thank you very much. Okay, we're still a little bit behind schedule. Um, uh, it's, I'd like to call uh, citation number 213-70-716 and 213-66245, which is three, I'm sorry, Varenas Street, Unit A, oh, I'm sorry, Varenas. Uh, is Noel Chang here? Great, thank you. Okay, uh, Public Works, uh, actually, we'll just swear her in before she speaks. He pointed out that's more efficient. <laughs> Ms. Wong. Yes. Okay. Uh, have, no, go ahead. Oh, but she's already been. Speak. You've already been when she comes to speak. Oh, okay. And what he was right. pointing out. Sorry, sorry. Might, yeah, it's a, it's a better. Yeah, okay. A okay. Lisa, every time you guys speak on the mic, just mention your name because it's an audio recording. Okay. okay? Nancy Wong representing me. <laughs> um, Public Works. On November, sorry, on Monday, November 19th, while performing a routine inspection in District 2, I was driving on the 1400 block of Grant Avenue. As I was parking in the area by the North Beach Pizzeria restaurant, I did notice by the city can area there was a few cardboard boxes and a silver Cuisinart toaster oven right between the two green compost bin and the fire hydrant. Upon further inspection, I found mailing labels from the corporate boxes belonging to Noli Chan at 3 Varaness Street, apartment number A, which is half a block away from the city can. I then verified with Recology Refuse Collection Service for 3 Varaness, unit A, does not have garbage service. And I also, to clarify, last week, just to make sure that they did call to see to order or start their garbage service. And Recology told me that they have not. As the cardboard boxes and the silver Cuisinart, Cuisinart toaster oven was dumped on the sidewalk alongside a city litter receptacle on a non-collection day, half a block away from the residence. I issue a citation to Noli Chan for illegal dumping by the city can for violating MHC 280 and MPC 35A. Previously, on October 22, 2018, I issue another cita uh, issue a citation to Noli Chan at 3 Varaness Street, Unit A, for illegal dumping of the cardboard boxes alongside the city can next to a white hydrant and a blue recycle bin near 1462 Grand Avenue. Due to the cardboard boxes and the silver Cuisinart art toaster oven being dumped on the sidewalk along a city litter receptacle on a non-collection day, half a block from the residence, I issue Noli Chan for violating MHC 280 and MPC 35. I'm sorry, Ms. Wong, do I understand to say that it was actually a Cuisinart? It was just a box? No. Okay. There, there's a Michael oven and some cardboard oh, boxes okay, too. Okay. So here are the photos. This is by the city can, a little uh, right across from, um, more like next to the pizzeria. And here are the evidence of the mailing label stating that I belong to Noli Chan at 3 Varaness. 
Here's one. And here's another uh, mailing label on another um, cardboard box. In November 20th. So there were two, two, two separate days? Two separate okay. incidents, same thing. Yeah, okay. Same location? Same location. Okay. And this incident uh, was on October 22nd, 2018 at 10, right by the city can again with the blue bin box next to it. And here's one of the mailing identifying who the um, box belonged to. And here's another one that the person tried to decide to peel the label off and I found partial evidence of the address. And then I went to three Varaness, and I think it's a three unit apartment, I'm not sure, but um, I did clarify with Recology, again, that, um, and I also sent them the note to start garbage service, and they still haven't to this day. And we did, um, my supervisor did talk to her. Uh, returned our phone call, and they had a, a more than 20 minutes talking on the phone, and she stated, the caller stated, that she was not willing to pay for it, and she will not open garbage service. She stated that she doesn't live there, that it's her boyfriend, but if your boyfriend live at 3 Varanez, why is your package there? Why are your, your, your mailing products over at 3 Varanez? If she stated that she doesn't live there, just put a note in mind. Okay, I have a question about garbage service. Mm -hmm. um, in typically with a three-unit building, mm -hmm. is it unit by unit? That yes, that garbage service. It's is yeah, it's required depending on how the property owner established with their tenant. Do they share it or do they not share it? Um, Two of the units do, except for number three. It's and I confirmed there with Recology too that three Varanists did not have garbage service. So, is that illegal? I thought it was illegal. It is illegal for them not to have garbage service. That's why we were out there. That's why we try to educate them. Hey, you know, you got to have it. It's by law that you got to have three bins. But the citation here is not about not having garbage service. It's about the refuse being illegally done by the city can. Right. Okay. Do you know what the system is to pursue uh, property people who don't have garbage service? Yeah, that's why we will do. Uh, we will go there and um, we will try to talk to them to start the garbage service, saying, "Hey, you got to have it. It's by law. Yeah. You got to have the three cans." Okay. And we will do an audit too if if it needs to be. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Cheng. And if you could come forward and be sworn in by our clerk, please. Good morning, ma'am. Please you state your name for the record. Noel Chang. You solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I want to state that, yes, I was sending packages to my boyfriend. Yes, I don't live there. It's in my name because I've had issues before where I've sent packages or I tried to order a package. And because it wasn't my name for the shipping or something, they messed it up for billing and they didn't send it because the billing didn't work because it was my credit card. So in the past, since that's happened to me, my thing is to just send it in my name and tell the person, hey, I'm sending you a package. It's just in my name. So I was there when they opened it. I was there when we dumped it into the recycle bin, which is right outside of the building. I have photos of that. Um, and as for the garbage, um, my boyfriend said that his landlord pays for it. He's there, been there for like 10 years. The landlord has always paid for it. They sold the building maybe two or three years ago or a little bit longer than that. I don't remember when they sold the building. Um, it's also not a three-unit building. It's a six-unit building. Um, and 
there's multiple units that don't have garbage. So the garbage can that's always been there has always been the one that the entire building has used. So, um, oh, and there's always homeless people there. Um, I've actually helped call <laughs> the San Francisco Police Department about it. Um, there was one incident where a lady was literally taking all of the garbage out of all their cycles and dragging them everywhere. I have photos actually of recently when I saw a homeless person going through the garbage, so. If you have any photos you'd like us to see, please share them. Yeah, I have photos. So here's an image where all the garbage was in the trash and then somebody took it all out. So that's one where it's just laid on top and that wasn't like that when we had left earlier that day. And then, and then that's another with trash just all over the floor for the building like on the other side of the alley. So the building of where my boyfriend lives is behind us on this picture. That makes sense, like the alley is this way mm -hmm. and his building that building. So there's all that garbage there and I doubt that that person was sighted or gone through. Um, oh. And there's a picture of the homeless person literally going through the garbage. I have a video as well. I'm sorry, I don't see it. What is Did you Oh, yeah. Rotate it. So. It. A little bit of glare. That, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. Okay. So he's literally going through it. I have a video as well mm -hmm. of him going through it at the time. Um, Was this on the same day as the two citations? No. I just took it because I know this happened, so... I didn't know that when the citation, the other thing about the citation is that I never received the two citations. I got a notice of violation for not having trash service because it went to the building and my boyfriend saw the mail and then gave it to me. Um, so when I called and I was like, well, I'm not gonna start garbage service for a place that I don't live at. I also have my bank statement showing my current address with my lease here um, that has the address that I live at. Um, my roommate pays for the garbage there, so the garbage is obviously not in my name. It's a house. Um, so we don't have like two garbage. It's not a two-unit building or anything. So this is. Could I see that, please? This uh, one? The, the, what you, the, oh, this is my shows lease. Your lease. Here you go. It's an old, it was old. I've moved in like 2009. And then I don't know if you want my bank statements that show my current address. No, I, I see it. Okay. 24th Avenue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so when I called and I talked to the manager, I was like, well, I don't have it. Um, I don't live there. I think you need to redirect this violation to somebody else because it's not, I mean, I'm not going to start. That doesn't make sense. Why would I pay for garbage for a place that I don't live just because you guys found some boxes that I shipped to my friend in my name? Like, I... It was easier for me to just do it that way than to do it and have, like, for some issue with my credit card. Um, she was like, well, you actually have two other violations. And in the beginning, she wasn't being very helpful. Her name was Peachy Mathis, I think, or my, my Mathis. Um, she wasn't being helpful. And I won't lie, I was being a little, like, aggravated on the phone because I was really upset. It's a $1,250 fine. I have a one-year-old daughter. I'm not... There's no way I'm doing that and starting garbage service. Like, I can't afford that. And I didn't dump it. Like, why would I dump it down the street when I could just come down from my friend's building and put it in the garbage can that's there? We folded it up and put it there. Um, so she sent me the other two. And the way that they were sent, I'm assuming that it was sent to the landlord of the building because it shows the landlord and then a couple pages later then it's addressed to me. So I never got them at my friend's apartment. Um, so I don't know if that matters. So I have copies of these as well. So it shows, so she sent it as a PDF. I don't know how they were sent, but I definitely didn't get separate citation for the other two at the property. We only got the one for the not having garbage service. Uh, and then as for the photo, I'm sorry, and so this mail was sent to you at an address where you don't live. Correct, but I only got the notice for not having garbage service. Okay. I never got the other citations, the 716 or the 
two, four, five. Never got those. Because if I had, I would have called earlier. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as for the photo, I don't know on this one where she saw the address for three Verenas. I see a four, five, four but I don't see a three Verenas. So I don't know. I don't know what this box is, and I don't know what the printer is, what I'm thinking that is, or the Cuisinart. And then if you look on the other photos that they have, there's a C&H box. I don't buy that much sugar. <laughs> um, and those are right next to the pizzeria, which is correct. So if you were to look closely... It's like a C&H box, and then there's another box here. I don't know. I mean, if these two are the ones that had my address on there, that's how they tagged me for dumping. Um, but I'm not sure about all the other boxes. And then I just have pictures of the interior. So if there's three garbage services, then half the building doesn't have garbage service. <laughs> And I don't know why we don't ask. I mean, well, that would need to be followed up on. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like the building owner. So when I talked to my boyfriend about it, he was like, building owner, it's in our lease. Like, we don't pay for garbage. So whatever has always been downstairs has always been the garbage can that we've always used. And then oh, that's the one. And then recently, there was two more, two new ones that had showed up. It was probably like at the middle of last year, which is why I say recently, because those were new. But the entire building had always used one recycle, one trash. And then recently we saw some more when the downstairs unit guy moved in uh, because they were small bins. So when the building owner got like new people and all that stuff, and then it went from, you know, like two people upstairs to like three or four because they expanded it and stuff like that, then there's not enough garbage space for all of the units for the small one, so I'm assuming that's why the downstairs person got it, because he's also the realtor or lease agent for the building. So he got it for the building and got a huge one. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Ms. Wong, could I ask you to clarify some of that, please? Before you go on, um, Your Honor, she stated that um, she never got it. And then here are our, um, one was to um, the letter itself to SF Green. And then with it, we usually send one to the property owner and the person, the violator. And yes, we did send it to her, to three Veritas. And she stated she never got it on those two incidents. And here is the, um, the fine with her name and the unit on it. Mm -hmm. So she stated that she never got one of them, which we did send out, just noted for a fact. Well, and, and it wasn't returned? It was to her. No, but I mean, you, you mailed it to her. At, we mailed on, it to on her. Baronet. She said she never got it. But in the mail, that the mail was never returned to you as undeliverable no. or? No. Um, so just FYI, we did send it to three Varoness with her name on it. And okay. with regard to other tenants, I'm kind of confused about the garbage service issue. I mean, you you guys have been looking into this, so if you... Well, we went in and we, we only found uh, Unit 5 has garbage service. And um, coming from recall, to my recall, that 3 did not have one. Mm -hmm. And it didn't state on the thing from Recology that there were six units. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we did ask her to start garbage service. And like I said, um, my supervisor did talk to her and trying to talk to her. And when she was calling her, uh, Noli, that she didn't want to hear it. It was just like, I only want to tell you what I want to be done. Mm -hmm. That was coming from the conversation that mm -hmm. I overheard, mm -hmm. that my boss was trying to talk to her. So, um, and then we said, you know, it's your right that you can take it to the hearing, let the hearing judge make its um, decision, not ours. But by law, you have to have garbage can. So we will probably go and audit the whole entire building to make sure they have garbage service. 
I have a question just in general, mm -hmm. not about this particular case. But does it generally work that individual apartments will have their own They're certain? supposed to, yeah. Okay. But if it's like a 200 and something unit, just give an example, no, of course not. Then um, under contract, like an SRO building, yeah. then they have like a big, um, like a dumpster for each and every single one, I assume. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works because of a tight space. But I know that in Chinatown, you know, certain SRO buildings is um, done that way, where all the units are combined into one big account for that whole entire building. And the property owner's responsible. And the property owner's responsible, but um, depending on their tenant contract, yeah, yeah, even if it's a new owner, they got to make sure it's um, their their name or lease is stating that number unit two to five or whatever, it's all in one, so it's under probably a commercial account that they open. Okay. That's, that's, an, that's the only way, you know. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Ms. Chang, did you have anything you'd like to add? So um, I did not get those. What she showed you was the violation notice, so when I got the uh, notice for not having trash service. If you look, it was dated the 21st of November. And then I got the first notice of violation, which is dated, for one of them was dated 12-5. So I got that. And then I got the other notice of violation, which was dated November 20th. I have it here, sorry. But I did not get the actual citation is what I was stating. I printed them all out, sorry. But you did get the notice of this hearing. Huh? You did receive notice of this hearing. Yeah, they emailed me. Yeah. So, Bretivo, yeah, he emailed me the thing because I called to try and schedule it back in maybe end of November, beginning of December, and he said that they were trying to hire people, so ignore any late fees and stuff, and then they'll give me a call back January. So then I didn't get one, so I called, and then they said, oh, we can book you for February 12th. I was okay. like, okay, and he's like, can we mail it to Three Brunas? I was like, no, I'd prefer you to email me um, because I don't live at Three Brunas, or you can mail me at my actual address. And so he just, I got it a couple days ago. I have it in my email for okay. the notice. But you did receive those other documents yeah, that so you showed like me. Yeah, so like this, okay. this. Can I see those, please? The ones that you received? Yeah. Thank you. So the ones I actually received is this one. Oh, this one. So these notices were all after uh, the date of the notice for not having trash service. But the actual citations noted for November 9th and Twentieth, I did not receive because I think that they were sent to the landlord. So these big ones with the actual like printout that has this. Could I see those, please? Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that were emailed to me by Peachy. Oh, okay. The, 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 oh, you got these by email. Yes. Oh, okay. Then I know it's okay. Yeah, but I never got the physical version of those. I just got the first notice of like the one that you just saw. So okay. they give you, I guess. The regular citation, they mail it to you with the items that you got, that you violated, checked out. Mm -hmm, right. And then I guess if you don't respond, then they give you the first notice. So I only got the notices and I didn't get these. And my assumption is because they sent it to the landlord right. along but, with But you were talking on the phone to Public Works. I mean, you were yeah, aware that, of what So was by going the time. You were aware. No, I didn't. I wasn't aware of these two. I was only aware of not having garbage service. So I only got. Yeah, but th th that's a separate action. Not having garbage service is a separate action. Yeah, yeah. So What's the, before the us only, today. Yeah. Is, so the only time I found out about the two citations was because I didn't have garbage service, and that's when she was like, "Well, I can't waive your garbage service because you actually have two other citations." And I was like, "Well, I didn't know, like which citations." So she's like, "Oh, I'll email them to you." I was like, "Okay," because I don't know about the other citations. I just I only have the one about service. I'm not going to pay for. 
garbage service. And then when I got these, I was like, I can't pay, I'm not paying $250. I didn't dump it, I put it in the garbage can. Like, we didn't walk down a block to dump them. It totally fit in the garbage can. So, okay. the, yeah, so the, just, I only knew about one and then I found out the other when I was on the phone with the manager. Okay. Could I look at those again? I'm sorry. I, I, this is, could I look at your documents again, please? Tracking this is. Um... These are the ones I knew about. This is the one I was emailed. This is the pictures I took. And then this is my lease. And then. Okay, I, I don't need your lease. I don't need the okay. pictures. And, uh, and, and, and these are the ones that reached you in the mail, you said? Those are the ones I got physically yeah. in the mail. So I only, so I got the first notice of uh, no but, trash. But I mean, this, as I read it, uh -huh. it, it's, this is. So they're all dated. The notices for the citations that we're talking about today are dated after I got the trash service citation. I believe so I got that after and, and this is what was that's what was emailed to emailed me to after you. I called in and November. found out okay and it was emailed to me in like the two two attachments like that so I don't know if how they mailed it, because obviously I don't have the thing, but it looked like if they had emailed it just as the attachments were showing, then it was sent to the landlord's property address or whatever their address is. Now, who is SF Green LLC? The building owner. Okay, let me give these back. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, I'll issue a finding by mail. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, um, our next item is actually was called for 9.30. I'm sorry we're running late. It is citation number 213-674-92-115 Ellington Avenue. Uh, Mr. Salango is here. Okay, thank you. First, we'll have public work speak. Um, our procedure is, my name's Joan Lubomirsky, and I was appointed to be a hearing officer in these cases. And our procedure is that the public works uh, representative will present the case and photographs and what happened. And then after that, you would speak and uh, explain your position to me. So if you could sit down for just a moment, thank you. And Ms. Wong will uh, present the public works case. Nancy Wong, Public Works, for 115 Ellington Avenue, representing Samuel People. On Tuesday, October 30th, 2018, at approximately 4.35 p.m., while performing a routine inspection, I found a pile of debris on the sidewalk in front of 18 Mount Vernon Street. Upon further inspection, I discover a mating label with the address 115 Ellington Avenue, affixed to one of the packages found amongst the debris. The recipient of the box was in the name of Raynar Noble at the address of 1115 Ellington Avenue. Utilizing my department issue tablet, I was able to identify the owner of 115 Ellington to Remigio and Elmer Linda Noble. I didn't issue a citation to Remigio and Irma Linda Noble for the violation of MHC 280, commonly known as illegal dumping code. Here's one of the identifying label that he found among the trash here. Thank you. 
Okay, could I understand? I'm sorry. Um, I'm backtrack. The debris was found at what address? 115 Ellington Avenue. Okay, and um, you and the, the property owner is who? The Nobles? Yes, Mr. Noble. Okay. And was this, um, is this, uh, was that on a normal collection day or do you know? That I'm not sure. He didn't write it in the statement, so. Okay. Okay, and, and there, but there were no other labels that he mentions in his report or photographs of other. No, he did. He just said that. You know, usually, like I stated, that we usually take one or two photos for evidence. Yeah. Like for me, when I did it and when I presented it, yeah. I did two. Yeah. But um, I understand. Coworker. Okay. No, I got it. <laughs> well, we'll let him know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, yeah, particularly when there's a pile, yeah. it's good to know more. Okay. okay. Then, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Selango, Selang are you here on this item? Okay, if you could please, the clerk will swear you in, if you could do that. Good morning, sir. Please okay. state your name for the record. What's your name? Uh, I will be your noble. Okay. Oh. Uh, 115 Ealing to California. Okay. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? I, I do. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Please Noble. Speak into the mic, okay? Speak into the microphone, please. Yes, Bob, good morning. Perfect, good morning. Yeah, I'm here in behalf of my, of this situation, my wife and my, my wife, Ermelinda Noble, and myself, Remy Hugh Noble, to compete this uh, situation. I went to 115, oh, I went to 1155 market to pay this, 200, this bill 250, but I have no enough money, so that's why I came here to go compete. I came here to, this, this amount will be least that, because we don't have enough money to pay this $250. You said you went to 1155 Market to pay it. Is that what? Yeah, you I went. I went there, but they they told me that uh, I must have to attend the court so that I can, I can, so that I will not pay this two hundred two hundred fifty dollars, ma'am. Uh, are you the property owner? You own this property? Yeah. And you say you can't pay the fine? Well, I'm trying to understand. Thank you. Well, I came here to, if possible, uh, this $250, I will not pay it anymore. And uh, this garbage, we will not do, we will not do. I advise my 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 son to not dump the garbage anymore. We will put in the garbage can so that no more, no more garbage in the street like that. I mean, is there a, a hardship you're explaining? I'm trying to, I understand you're saying you won't do it again, but um, is there a reason for a hardship here or? Um, you say you, you, you can't pay it. Yeah. Mm. Impossible. This $250, uh, least, I'll be least or to, I will be least or I will not be anymore. That uh, then we will promise that we will not dump garbage anymore in this. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Uh, can you see is the, if if there's a history on yeah. this address, please? Sorry, there was another photo. I'm there sorry. is. There is. There's another photo. Okay. Um, the the first one I show you was twenty 
2017. The recent one was this, and that was in uh, October of last year, 2018. So that's why the accumulation of $450 that he was talking about. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> well, what I have here, oh, I, I, there, oh, I see there, no. Well, there's, um, it was the first violation on 2017. And then this recent one was 250 bucks for the illegal dumping. Dumping of refuse. In November. Okay. What I seem to have here. Yeah, it's only for 250. I don't know why he said 450. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because the first one was 2017. And then now this recent violation that he had in um, October 30th. Okay, because what I have here is two copies of it looks like the same citation. Uh, and it's $250. Correct. But there's a balance due of 275 so I don't. Oh, it's probably from, he didn't pay for the first one maybe? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. So I guess he's asking, I, I, coming from that conversation, mm -hmm. he's trying to ask for, um, to kind of waive it because of hardship or something, he said. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, so because of the illegal dumping, so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Mr. Noble, did you have anything to add? Yes, ma'am. Did you have anything else you'd like to tell us? Uh, no problem, I'm just solely impossible. I will not pay this $250 tomorrow. That's, that's your request. That's what yes. you're asking. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I will send you mail. I, w I will issue my findings by mail. And we'll send it to 11115 Ellington Avenue. Yeah. Um, I'll mail you my information on my decision. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, um, our 940 hearing has been canceled on 1003 Post Street. So our next item is our 950 item. Uh, I'd like to call citation number 213-75686. Um, I, my name is Joan Lubomirsky, and I was appointed by the city administrator to be a hearing officer. And I don't know if you were here earlier, but what our procedure is, is that the Department of Public Works will make their presentation, and then the appellant, who I have here as, as, as Mr. Joseph, will make his presentation, and then I'll issue my findings by mail. So if uh, I could call that citation, 4522 3rd yeah. Street. Let's just wait a second here. We seem to be having a question. Let's just wait. I don't know what's happening here. Okay. Yeah. And then when he's done talking, he's done talking. Okay. Thanks. Are we uh, online? Are we okay? Thank you. We seem to be having technical problems, and I don't know what they are, but I'm, that they're being fixed. I'm sure. Is this yours? This is Amy's. Are we are we working now? Are we in order? Okay, Ms. Wong, if you could please present the information from the Department of Public Works. Nancy Wong, Public Works, representing Enye for four five two two Third Street. On Saturday, December 29, 2018, at 3 p.m., I responded to a neighborhood complaint from a citizen that illegally dumping was taking place at a city can. According to the complaint, the, can, the city can was located on 
4,500 4, block of 3rd Street. Upon my arrival to the location, I observe a man fearing a large garbage bag to the intersection of 3rd and LaSalle. He also brought a box filled with unknown content to the city can too. I verify that the items came from 4522 3rd Street and proceeded to issue a citation for the violation of MHC 280 and MPC 35A. Furthermore, I addressed the convenience store owner about discontinuing the illegal dumping at the city can. I also requested a video footage from a nearby business who has camera pointing in the directions of LaSalle and 3rd Street intersection. This video also confirmed the summary of the event of the illegal dumping. Here's the man that was coming up from 4522 3rd Street, dumping by the city can. He just dumped the um, corbor box. Nate, I have three videos. Can you? Another one. That was the first one. Okay, and, and you say that the, the individual left the convenience store and left the... Came out from the convenience yeah. store. Yeah, okay. Dump it. Now he's dumping the tire and the garbage bag by the city camp. That's, that's the same individual. Yes. Yes. One more, I'm not sure. And now he's walking back to the store in at four five two two. I can only be in one place. I'm sorry, did I miss anything? No, that's the same thing. Okay. Here's that man that was dumping, and this was the item from the f image. How the garbage bags and the crate and also, and that's the store that he was coming down from. From the market. Um, I have a question. Excuse me, Ms. Wong. In the, did, is there anything in the report about the contents of the bag or the contents of the? No, he didn't write it down. It just stated that um, the evidence that he was observing and um, the footage of okay. the gentleman that came out dump, uh, from 4. Okay. 4522. Got it. Okay. Mark it. Okay. Uh, the individual listed here as the appellant is Assad Joseph. Is he present? Mr. Joseph, if you could come forward and be sworn in, please, by our clerk. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. Assad Joseph. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, it is. 
Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Yes. All right, so um, I'm the property owner. My brother is the, the tenant. And um, I was there at that day. And to the best of my knowledge, nothing came out of that store. The video shows, or the pictures do not even show him coming out of that store. And where would he have a tire and, you know, all the stuff coming out of the store that he was accused, that, I, that we were accused of, rather, by this man. It wasn't even her. She said she was the one that was there and observed it. It wasn't her. It was someone else. I'm sorry. I, could you start over again? You're the property owner. Your brother's the tenant. Correct. And we you're both received the citation. Yes. And you're saying that that person wasn't leaving your store? No. I mean, if he said when I told him, when I tried to explain to him that it wasn't coming out of the store, he interrupted me and told me, pointed to the city cameras and said, there's video. I said, well, if there's video, I'd like to see. I said, because any time something happens on that corner, because my brother used to be a tenant at that corner where the video was taken from, and ever since he evicted him a couple years ago, it's not been nothing but issues and phone calls to the city and the police department accusing him of all kinds of stuff. So when he told me that there was city cameras, so I'd like to see him if that's the case. That's why I made this hearing. Because if they did come out the store, we wouldn't have a problem paying the fine. It's no problem. And then when I tried to explain to him about the old landlord, he said, no, this has nothing to do with your landlord. He knew nothing of the situation in the past. He didn't say what landlord. He said, no, this has nothing to do with your, la your former landlord. Um, do you know who the person, did you see the video? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, but you're saying that person isn't coming out of your store? No, I mean, no. Um, you can play it again if you like. I don't see him coming out of anywhere. He's walking down the street. Well, but he came out of a door and then went back in a door That's that, that is the address of your establishment. No, I don't think so. I would, have, I would have seen it. I would have never mentioned that to you right now. You played a video again. You don't. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, you don't. There's. Yes, thank you. Thank you for setting that up again. I thought I saw a video of him going in a door. Those are the only two. I'm videos. sorry? Those are the only two videos. Those were the only two. So that's what we all saw. The supervisors saw and observed. That's why it was um, in the flash drive. We, he didn't show that person. He didn't film that part. Oh of him going in and out. But he observed in doing the surveillance. Oh, when, so when the inspector was there. The, the supervisor, The supervisor yeah. was there. Yeah, he observed. He the, observed somebody going in and out of the door. From that location at 4522. OK, thank bringing you. Bringing that stuff out. OK, thank you. OK, and it's a constant um, that we receive complaint on. That's why they did that sting. OK. And that's why we did the uh, ille illegal, no, no jump illegal campaign mm -hmm. out on Third Street. Okay, good. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Joseph, did you have anything you'd like to add? Okay, I'll be issuing my findings by mail. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I'm going to be stepping down now. Um, Ms. Enriquez is also a hearing officer. 
and she will be uh, carrying the rest of the agenda starting with 10 o'clock uh, on Haight Street. And but I will do the paperwork on the uh, on the items that I heard. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to sit here? Joseph, Joseph, you want to start on the paper Joan, for the items that you already did? The 10 o'clock is up on the call, right? Yeah, the, the call. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good morning, sir. Could you hear me? Good morning. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Lenita Enriquez. I am the uh, hearing officer presiding over uh, today's administrative hearings. Can you state your name for the record? Uh, Sam Hussery. Okay. Uh, we. This is uh, regarding citation two one three six two three seven eight at fourteen sixty three Haight Street. Yeah. Um, I'd like the uh, public works representative to come up. Uh, sir, just so you understand the process, public works will uh, present their findings. And once they're done, you will have the opportunity to speak. Okay. Um, actually, can, uh, before she, she begins, you, I will have the hearing uh, officer swear you in. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear that the testimonies you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. Sir? Yes. Thank you. On Monday, September 24th, 2018, at approximately 10.40 a.m., while performing a routine inspection, I found several bags of garbage on the sidewalk between refuse receptacles on Haight Street. Upon further inspection, I found markings on the receptacles identifying them as belonging to 1463 Haight Street. I then confirmed with Recology refuse service for this address is under BITSA with 96 gallon trash and recycle bins and a 64 gallon compost bin all serviced on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Previously on August 20th, 31st, and September 5th, I and my coworker issued notices of violation after finding the overflowing refuse at this address. Based on the problematic history with containerized containerization of refuse at this property, and because the receptacles are again overflowing with additional items on the ground, I issued a citation to the account holder of record for violating MHC 283. And I want to add that the 96 gallons was something that they recently added in October, but prior to that, they had 64 gallon bins. Um, so here's a photo. Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Yes, she's showing photos at oh, this okay. time. And so you can see there's a lot of uh, garbage. Additional, and then on the inside, you can see that, you know, these items came from here. Um, and then for the notice of violation that was issued, same thing. The overflowing bins, additional garbage on the sidewalk. And then these pictures again. Um, some items inside the bag, another bag. Um, and I also want to add that I had a conversation with um, the owner on sorry, 
sorry, hold on. I'll let him start and then I'll find the, okay. we had a conversation. And the conversation with, with so we had in Mr. the conversation Hussari. that we had, he basically stated that um, he couldn't tell when he was going to have excess of garbage, and I had said to him that he needed to be able to project how much garbage he was going to be putting out and to make arrangements for that to be um, disposed of properly. He stated he went on and stated that it's a city problem with homelessness. He blamed recology. Um, he blamed pretty much everyone except for um, taking the responsibility. He simply refused to get locks because he said that that's an additional expense. Because I said to him that if you have someone going through your garbage bins, then you should consider getting locks. But at this point, because there was so much garbage, locks wouldn't even work in this instance. He needed to basically make special arrangements to have that picked up. Um, but he, several times he called in. Um, and then prior to that, there were all of these incidents here. Can you um, pull, the, I can't see it all the way. Is this the the property, is it residential or no, a business? No, it's commercial. It's, it's a business. Okay. So it's a pizza restaurant. Um, this was on a day that he called in, um, and this is my colleague who actually took the phone call. Um, do you want me to read this? Yeah. Yes, okay. that's fine. Um, and she writes, um, there's a long history, but the short of it is, Sam feels he doesn't deserve a citation. Um, he said that he was going to provide a video where he says recology um, was causing the problem. He forwarded it to me, but it did not contain a date or time, and the video cut off, um, and it just showed recology doing their job. Um, I told Sam that he needs to request a hearing because he has given me, he has not given me evidence um, and that enough for her to dismiss it. And she said that he was upset and says that DPW needs to do their job um, and leave him alone. Let's see. Okay. Um, Mr. Hussari? Yes. You can speak. You can present your, your case. Okay, I never said, I never said uh, leave me alone. I said leave the businesses alone because we're going through hell on 8th Street with all this construction. And I know DP, DPW has parts to do with cleaning the streets because there's human waste all over the place every day. There's homeless people knocking over our garbage cans. And I do have video evidence of the drivers taking the garbage, throwing it on the ground, and leaving it on the ground. And I did submit that video to... Uh, Tracy, and she claims that she doesn't see a timestamp, but it clearly has a timestamp on the video, and I'll resubmit the video. So it's not our fault that the trash ends up on the floor. It's in the bin at night. Whatever happens between the time we close to the time it gets picked up, I have no idea what goes on Heat Street. I can understand that, but the photos that I'm seeing, your bins are completely full, and they're still garb they're are numerous garbage bags on the side of your bin. So it's not that anyone went through your bins and took that garbage out. There was no room in your bins for this garbage in the first place. So I I understand what you're saying about Hate Street and issues you feel you have with public works, but for today, it's about your you putting out garbage Okay, yeah, in a way that you're bin. not supposed to. So I, I'm trying, I, I need you to explain that and, and, okay. and why you don't feel you should have a citation for that. Well, the bin, the bin size changed so that we can handle more garbage and we, we have three day, three day a week pickup now. So any day, like an event day, like a fair day or you know, a certain event on hate where we have overflowing garbage, we we had a deal with Sunset Scavenger where we play an overflow fee. So if there's overflow, we leave it on top of the bin and we get charged an overflow fee. And that's something Sunset Scavenger recognizes. So I'm not sure how they end up on the ground, but apparently I have video of the driver just dismissing all the garbages and throwing whatever's excess on the ground and only leaving what's inside the bin in the truck. So 
uh, they're not abiding by their overflow fee, which we agreed to pay. So we're getting hit with city violations every week. When we agreed to pay an overflow fee from Sunset Scavenger. So typically what happens, it's not an agreement or an arrangement. Um, each individual business and residents, they are responsible for making sure that they have sufficient garbage service. Now, if there is overage, they will be charged as a penalty for their garbage being overflowing. But this is not an arrangement, and it doesn't always occur. So even if they had of overcharged them, had I gone out there, I still would have cited them. It's not a special arrangement that people make with Recology. It's a penalty. Um, and while Recology, it's, so they can elect to take the overflow or, or not? Or not. So oftentimes, sometimes they won't, um, and sometimes they will do the overcharge. But in this instance, the entire block, garbage hadn't even been picked up that day. Okay. Right. So do you ever contact Recology prior to garbage pickup when you see that you're going to have overflow to arrange for them to pick it up and pay the additional costs, the additional fee? Yeah, we, I mean, every time we have overflow, they charge us an additional fee. We eat it because, you know, certain days we have an excess of garbage. That's fine. But for me to come and pay, you know, police in the middle of the night and, and uh, monitor my garbage cans, and then in the morning when I find garbage all over the place and, you know, food, you know, the homeless go through the garbage, they empty out the, the bags all over the floor, and I have to sit there and clean it up. I mean... But That's you do understand. have to do. You, you know, do understand, sir, that if you did not leave those bags out, they wouldn't have anything to rip open and go through. If well, you not, would properly no, dispose of the bags. No, that's not necessarily true because you can't control what the homeless go inside the bins. I have videos of them going inside the bins too. Okay, so and you can't control what they do inside the bins. I understand that, but ha again, have you considered locks and, for the and, bins? And I hear what you're saying. I don't want garbage on the floor either, but. Uh, I don't think that's fair to tell, tell me that just because the bags are on top of the bins, it, it's our fault. No, the bags are not on top of bins. The bags are on the sidewalk, going down the sidewalk. Well, well ma'am, ma I'm, I'm, I'm Tony. I'm Sam's partner. Uh, he just merged into the call. I mean, is it professional for your drivers to leave garbage on the ground? when they have the truck right in front of them. Is that sanitary for the city? I mean, does that so make any sense? Th those are Recology drivers, and they are, you pay for them to pick up the garbage within the bins. If you want them to pick up additional garbage that you're leaving out, that has to be an additional fee, and, and you have to contact to them and arrange that. Locks on the garbage. I mean, these homeless people break windows and steal backpacks. I, I, I don't find it hard for them to... Well, not only that, I called I called Sunset Scavenger. They want to they want to issue a fifteen dollars per bin fee per pickup for the lock. So that's forty five dollars per bin per per pickup. So we have three times a week. That's over a hundred dollars a week just to put a lock on it, just so that I can bring that homeless and everyone from scavenging. But when I walk on Hate Street, and I've been there ten years, I'm walking in human waste all the time. I'm seeing trash all over, homeless sleeping on the sidewalk. So why should I pay the 150 when you guys are not doing your job? Clean that should be the city problem. But the city problem too. So we should give I, you guys a violation too. And I've been complaining about this, and no one, no one listens because each street's probably going downhill because there's too much homeless. There's human waste, so people don't want to walk there anymore. I understand those concerns, sir, but you're also it's compounding even, the issue by not taking responsibility. Not sir, I'm speaking. Can you please stop? I'm sorry. I'm speaking, so can everyone get a chance to speak? You've, you've actually had your chance to speak. Um, Excuse at me? The, at this time, you have had your chance to speak. At this time, I've heard your side, and I've heard from the staff from the Department of Public Works. Okay. Um, did you get you, the video evidence? I do not have any video evidence. Okay, I texted the video evidence. Is there a number or email I can send the video evidence of the driver throwing the garbage on the floor? At this point, if it wasn't submitted and for me to review today, which is your hearing date, I, I'm not going to look at it later. Okay, but that's not, that, but that's not my fault. I submitted it in text. I have proof in text. Well, is there a reason why you weren't here, are able to be here in, I have in proof person? proof in text that I sent it to one of your reps, though. That's what I'm trying to tell you. She said I don't have a timestamp, and I sent her a video 
with a timestamp. So, so why are you guys dismissing this? So, so I, I think Peachy mentioned he sent it to Peachy, and she said that uh, it wasn't time stamped and there wasn't a date, and then she said it just cut off. Right. She didn't and provide I, any of that documentation. With the time stamp, and I have evidence of even a text that I sent it to her in October. Okay, well, sir, sir, as of today, I don't have a video. Um, all I can go by are your your comments and statements, as well as public works staff. Well, well um, ma'am, is, is, it, is it his fault that we submitted a video that you guys didn't receive that we can submit right now, that you can receive in seconds? I mean, it's 2019. There's emails, there's text messages. I don't understand what you're talking about. We don't want to get a lawyer involved. Okay, at this point, I, I'm, I'm, I've heard from both of you. And I will make my decision based on what I've heard today. And you will have my decision in the mail within the next 10 business days. So uh, thank you. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yes. You can, uh, that was, I think he, he added someone to the phone call without telling us, or they were already on there. I don't know. Uh, it's 1010. It's in red. Um, so I will call the next citation, uh, 213-66293-154 Thrift Street, Kathy Handy. Hmm. Uh, what time is it? We can wait a few minutes. Was it for 10, 10 20? Do you think she's outside? Well, I, I'll call the 1030, and then if she comes at that time. Uh, so the next one is citation 213-68601-573 South Van Ness Avenue. Joe, are you Mr. Vargo? Yeah, Mr. Vargo. I'm a representative of uh, Mr. Robert Imhoff, the property owner. Okay. Uh, the subject address is our, our office contains three, well, five dwelling units, but they're sort of merged into two offices and one nonprofit. Okay. Um, uh, so I will have the uh, Nathan Rodas, our clerk, swear, okay. swear you both in. Okay. Um, and then you Public Works the will go uh, present first, and then you will have the opportunity. There's two mics. Thank you. Oh, there's two? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, please state your name for the record, ma'am. Enos Harris. Representing... For public works. Thank you. Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear that the testimonies you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And uh, you can have a seat, sir. Public works will go ahead first. Good morning. Good morning. Um, on September 20th, 2018, as part of an inspection, DPW discovered that 573 South Van Ness did not subscribe to garbage service and sent a warning letter to the property owner, Robert Imhoff, informing him of the requirements regarding correct and sufficient refuse collection service for San Francisco properties. On October 31st, 2018, after confirming this five-unit property did not have service, I requested Recology initiate service and issued a citation for violating Ordinance 291.2 for failing to initiate refuse collection. On January 1, 2019, as part of a reinspection, DPW issued another citation for violating Ordinance 291.2 after confirming this property did not initiate service. 
And that is all. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I, I guess I want to first of us start by starting out. The only notice of violation that I, or citation that I have, was the one that was issued and I responded to by certified mail on <clears throat> November 18th, uh, 2018. I did not receive the previous notice that we didn't have trash service, nor the subsequent one issued in January. I also called the number we're supposed to call here to contest the citation numerous times, left numerous voicemails. It was never got a call back. Um, they instruct you to call a different number in that voicemail. I called that voicemail twice. It was full. So I did send a certified notice to the city saying we're contesting the citation. So I don't know if the uh, city has uh, proof of service for the other two, but I, I don't have them and I didn't receive them in the mail. So, but I do have this one, which was certified mailed to us. And that was the basis of our uh, uh, contesting the citation. So. Okay. Matt. The, so, are there any photos or documents other than? We don't have um, photos for insufficient service. Okay. It's based off of recologies, off of the garbage records. Okay. So the garbage records at the garbage company indicate that this property did not have service. Okay. Sir? Okay, yeah, we've never had trash service at this location. Um, and I guess I'll just go into the points of why we do not feel we should be required to have trash service. Um, we've already went over that uh, on 1122, we were issued a citation uh, in violation of municipal code section 291.2, which uh, imposes a fine in the amount of $100 for not subscribing to uh, trash service. I do wanna start out by stating that we are attending this hearing to exhaust our administrative remedies under the law to contest the citation, and that the points of contention that I raised today uh, will not be limited to further arguments and other hearings or court proceedings should the city rule that, cita that the citation be imposed. So that if we choose to file a writ of mandate against the city um, and the imposed citation, we can bring further arguments and then what is presented today. Um, section 291.2 of Municipal Health Code states, Ongoing and adequate refuse collection service is necessary to protect public health and contribute toward the creation of a healthy community. In San Francisco, the owner of any dwelling unit or commercial property is required to pay for adequate refuse service, refuse collection service, and the service must be provided by a licensed refuse collection company using permitted vehicles. Uh, the first point we'd like to make is that the city has made no inspection of the cited property and there's been no violation issued by the city that the property is creating any public health hazard or is causing a nuisance from waste or improperly stored or deposed of uh, re refuse. While section 291.2 does state that adequate refuse service collection is necessary to protect public health, the city hasn't shown any direct cause that our property is causing a public health hazard. We believe without an inspection and violation for public health hazards as it relates to refuse, the city cannot force a property owner into paying for refuse collection service. Sir, what type of business do you have? Or uh, it's a real estate company. Uh, we have uh, two of, of say three, uh, f four of the five units are devoted to our own company. Uh, so it's just an office. We, I have five employees there. I manage all operations. Um, the second floor is the Sai Baba Center. It's a nonprofit. We donate that floor to the Sai Baba Foundation. And what do you, you do with the, your, your- We take our refuse to the dump ourselves as we've done for 40 years at the location. And the nonprofit? Same. We are, we are the beneficiaries of the nonprofit. We, we, we donate the space, so. Uh, the second point we'd like to make is that the law requires the owner of any dwelling unit and commercial property to describe and pay for refuse collection service. Currently, the city provides one option to describe and pay for refuse collection services, which is recology. Thus, the service imposed on a property owner owners is without freedom of choice nor cost. If the city imposes such a requirement for services, then one could equate the requirement to a tax on property owners, which any tax would require approval by two-thirds majority of the voters. 
The law also requires that we, a private citizen and property owner, purchase a service from another private citizen and private business without choice of vendor nor cost and with penalty if we do not comply. Without these costs being a tax voted on by the citizens and perhaps billed directly on our property tax bill, we do not believe the city can require a private citizen to purchase a service from another private citizen. On these points, we are contesting the citation and we will not be subscribing to refuse collection services at this property under the current law. We are fully prepared, if the citation is upheld, to file a writ against the city to contest this law. Okay. Um, do you, other than the report from Recology, do you, is there ever been a complaint of trash or dumping so, at that location? Um, is it, or it's just a report from Recology saying there's a business operating there and they don't have garbage collection. So we, we discovered this location as part of an eco blitz that we did. Um, and during that eco blitz, they were, we were, we were noted to this particular property because of the grimy sidewalks. So that, that drew us to that location. And then as part of that investigation, we also do a full, um, history or um, we check out the entire property and so it was at that time that we realized they did not have service okay and you tie the sidewalks to the garbage i mean i'm still trying to understand no what so um we um we discovered this property as part of the e oh and eco blitz is when we walk the entire block so we were drawn to this property because of the condition of the outside of the property the sidewalks are the building itself um, I have a couple of complaints here about stains on the sidewalk. There was one, um, so there, there was something for illegal dumping as well. No, no, I'm sorry, no, it's, it was sidewalks. These are all sidewalk stain um, issues that I see here. And the sidewalks were only stained in front of this one property? It's the condition of the property, yes. The condition of the, yes, to answer your question, yes. Okay. And you have no photos of the sidewalk are the property. There was a citation issued for that, it appears. Um, so there, I'll take a look. There are photos of that. Yes, there are photos for the sidewalks. And that was back in November. Uh, that was a separate citation. That's not the citation that we are contesting today. That citation was invaded. We power washed the sidewalk. So I, aside from that, I'm asking, you know, there was no garbage, there was no dumping out there, and visibly the property itself, was it clean? Taking care, I mean, it was, other than the sidewalks, there was nothing else that led you to look into the property owner and what was happening at at that property as far as refuse or? The initial um, draw to the property was the sidewalk. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Vargo, for coming. Uh, my decision will be mailed to you within the, the next 10 business days. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I will just call, I'm not sure. Uh, doesn't appear that the woman has arrived, but I will call citation. Um, 1040 is here. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll call it last then. I, I'd rather just get it over with. Where's my No. Okay. Okay. Well, I will call citation 213-71037-642 uh, Head Street, Mr. Albert Wong. You can use this other mic, sir. Mr. Wong, uh, Mr. Rodas will swear you both in. Public work staff will present first, and then you'll have the opportunity to present. Good morning. Please state your names and what you're representing here. Uh, I'm, my name is Natalie Chen, and I'm with the uh, Department of Public Works. Sir, please state your name and who you're Albert representing. Wong. My name's Albert Wong. 
I'm the owner at uh, 642 Head Street. Thank you. Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear to the testimonies you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. On March 16, 2018, after determining 642 Head Street did not subscribe to refuse collection service, a notice of violation was issued to the property owner, Albert Wong, ordering them to initiate refuse collection service within 15 days. On April 14, 2018, after confirming with Recology, the property owner of 642 Head Street still hasn't initiated refuse collection service as ordered in previous warning. I issued a citation to the property owner for violating Municipal Health Code 291.2. On April 4, 2018, I spoke with the property owner, Albert Wong, about the violation, and he said that he would start garbage refuse collection service on November 21st, 2018, in response to a service request concerning improper put out and storage of refuse receptacles and illegal dumping. I inspect 642 Head Street and found that there's no garbage collection service account under this address. After confirming with Recology that 642 Head Street did not subscribe to refuse collection service, I issued a second citation to Albert Wong for violating Municipal Health Code 291.2. Mr. Wong. Yes, uh, I did receive a citation, and uh, I didn't realize my tenant didn't have a uh, service. But as soon as I received the citation, I called them and uh, had them uh, order service. Okay. And I have the lease here, and uh, that they started service in December. Okay. Service has started at that location? Excuse me? You have ordered service since the citation was issued? Uh, the attendant did, yes. And one of them is, is dated, did they just start service today or is that date just from um, when you, is it from a fax or? As soon as I received the letter, I called them. So it should be sometime, it, it should be on here somewhere. Now is that? The oh, can, I'm sorry, can you come to the microphone? I can't hear you. I actually talked to Recology um, about this, and I find out that actually the um, garbage service account, um, um, they actually I issue a citation on April uh, to property owner Albert Wong, and then he start the service. So I canceled the first citation. And then like two months later, he canceled the account again. And then, um, and then, like um, it's like he canceled account in August, and then since then, there's no garbage service account at that location. So it's like four months. Okay. And then actually, um, I spoke with him, and then he actually know that if there's someone lives there, then they need to have garbage service. And like according to the lease, 
her, his tenants moved in in August. So by that time, he already has tenants live there like for four months. And I believe he worked for Recology. So he basically knows the rule that everyone, if, there's, if the property is occupied, then they need to have garbage service. But for four months, there's no, there's none. And actually, um, so the reason I we visit the property and find out there's no garbage service is because there's a lot of garbage in front of the house. Okay. So that's why I got a complaint and I went by there and I saw the garbage and then I checked with Ecology and then they said that there's no gar there's no garbage service account at that address. Okay. So so that's why I issued a second citation. Okay. Do you ha and you didn't take any photo documentation? I have what? I have the uh, NOV. I sent the notice of violation. I sent out uh, in November. I can show you. Is it a picture of the site or just the NOV? No. So is, is the picture of the stuff out? So let me, because I cannot find it right now. So, um, sorry. Sometimes there's, the tablet doesn't work. It's, it's okay. I <laughs> found it. Okay. No, sorry, I cannot find no, it. It's but, fine. Yeah, the reason I, 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 I was there is because I got a complaint regarding the garbage bins and the garbage is like out in front. That's why I went there. So, um, so the, um, the, yeah, the point I'm trying to make is um, with property owner has responsibility to tell their tenants to have garbage service. So, and, and it's not the first time. So I spoke with the property owner before and then he know he know that he needs to have garbage service for her, I mean, his tenants, and he needs to tell his tenants to have garbage service and make sure they have it. Okay. So that I'm clear on the timeline of things. You went in April, and there was no service, and he started it in August. No, He started it right after that. He started right after, so I dismissed the citation. Okay. And then you canceled it in August, Mr. Wong, when tenants moved in? No, I think so. Yeah. Well, no, I'm asking him. He should know when he canceled the service. Um, actually, I have a property manager that takes care of it for me. And uh, <clears throat> I believe it was vacant for a couple of months. So I'm saying you canceled the service because it was vacant? Yes. And then in August, when you rented the location, why didn't you ensure that the tenants? Yes, it was uh, written on the lease that uh, they were supposed to start a water, PG&E, and garbage service. Yeah, they did not start the water or the garbage. They lived there without water service? No, it was under my name. Everything was under my name. Yeah, I kept everything under my name, PG&E, water. I just stopped the garbage. Okay. Yeah. And they just started service today? No, they started in December. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. 
I just saw yeah. today's date at the top. That's why I was asking, was that the date or was it? Oh, in December. Okay. December. Okay. 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 Um, well, thank you for coming in today. And my decision will be mailed to you within the next 10 business days. All right. Thank you. I can just One, two, no. um, so the final citation of today is two one three six six two nine three Kathy Handy at one five four Thrift Street. Um, she's a no show, so I, I will send my decision to her by mail within the next ten business days. Uh, this ends today's hearings. <laughs>